We have been talking about the positive benefits of globalization. Are there any negative impacts? Yes, globalization is a double-edged sword. What kind of negative impacts can it bring then? First of all, structural unemployment and a wide widening income gap. Why is this so? Since the world economy is constantly progressing, it is necessary for a country's economy to upgrade from low-end labor-intensive factories to high-end capital-intensive industries to maintain competitiveness. Structural unemployment becomes common. Is this because workers who used to do lowly skilled work find themselves jobless? Partially. The skills they possess are not needed, leading to a skill mismatch. I get it. Then how is the widening income gap incurred? It is between the skilled and unskilled workers. The skilled have the necess necessary skills needed in a knowledge-based economy, so they receive higher wages which value adds their talent. Unskilled workers see a slower wage growth as their skills are obsolete. Income inequality is measured by the Gini coefficient. In this case, the value is large. What does unequal income distribution imply? Since there is, a le there is lesser welfare, there is a lower standard of living. Structural unemployment is common in Singapore? Yes. Singapore often upgrades her economy to high-value-added services like pharmaceutical and biotechnology. Blue-collar workers find their, long life, uh, their lifelong skills redundant, and this was made worse by the influx of cheap foreign labour. How serious is this problem? As Singapore depends heavily on human resources to achieve sustained economic growth, workers who remain unemployed for a long time find it difficult to contribute to the economy. For instance, in terms of consumption due to prolonged loss of, econ of income. Does it affect the income distribution too? Most certainly. Do you know about the 209 United Nations Development Report? It is about the income gap between the rich and the poor in countries with high human development. The Gini coefficient was used as the indicator for the findings. A value of zero represents absolute equality and 100 represents absolute inequality. Singapore had a Gini coefficient of 42.5 and was ranked second among 38 countries. How can it affect Singapore's economy then? According to Stephen Pressman, professor of e economics in Monmouth University, he has identified a psychological effect which lowers productivity and reduces efficiency of the workers. What other negative impacts are there? Increased vulnerability to external economic threats. What does it mean? When a country is exposed to other economies worldwide, the risk of being affected by financial crisis is increased. What will happen to the economy? Due to negative business sentiments, foreign investors withdraw their investments. There will be widespread retrenchment among local workers as there are insufficient funds to continue running the companies. What else? A fall in global income leads to weak export demands and decrease in export revenue. This causes the AD to decrease. And with an increase in unemployment levels, productivity of the workforce decreases. It has shifts inwards and potential growth is hindered. This sounds really bad. Besides, the country's currency depreciates due to decreased demand of local currency since there is reduced FDI. This makes the country susceptible to import push inflation. Oh no! How terrible is it for Singapore? Really bad. Singapore's openness makes her very sensitive to hiccups in many economies. Any specific incidents? Let's look at the most recent one, which is the global recession, uh, economic recession that started in the USA in 2008. Singapore's economy declined for two straight quarters, causing it to enter into a, a recession for the first time in six years. Many sectors are affected? Yeah. Im important manufacturing sectors, including export oriented electronic and pharmaceutical industries, experienced contractions. The weaker external demand saw the slowing of pre precision engineering and chemical clusters. 
heightened uncertainties for sentiment-sensitive segments resulted in a slower growth in the financial services sector. That's really terrible. Nowadays, economic giants like China and India are on the rise. How does it affect Singapore? <laughs> this negative impact is known as competition from other economies. But what's the theory behind it? The ultimate goal of the firm is to maximize their profits. Hence, it is natural for them to relocate their production to other economies that offer cheaper labor and production facilities. So, a country that has a comparative advantage in lower cost manufacturing goods attracts more firms? Correct. When firms exit the country, it leads to structural unemployment as more lowly skilled workers are laid off when lesser manpower is needed to produce goods in declining industries. What other aspects of competition can economies face? FDI. Many countries compete for FDI to get the necessary skills. Foreign investors only invest in countries with lower corporate tax rates to reap higher rates of returns. Why would this be a competition? Can the tax rates be lowered? Yes, it can. But it can have negative impacts on the government budget balance as tax revenue make, a, make up a significant proportion. This increases the po possibility of the government lending in a, into, a deficient, uh, into a deficit. How is Singapore affected? Well, the difficulty of attracting markets has increased due to strong economic competitors like China and India. There are huge populations of 1.4 billion and 1.15 billion respectively. The strong consumer market and large workforce in these countries give Singapore the losing edge. China has the world's cheapest factory labor at 58 cents US dollar per hour, while that of Singapore is $3.81 cents per hour, US dollars per hour, why, which is why she attracts most of the manufacturing activities from many countries. Indeed, many firms have relocated their production to China in terms of cost considerations. They include disk drive manufacturer companies, which make up a significant proportion of Singapore's exports. Besides, Singapore and Hong Kong have also been competing for decades to gain dominance as Asia's best place to do business. You are right. Both regions are trying to lure foreign investors with their tax-friendly policies, easy company incorpor incorporation procedures and excellent infrastructure. However, Singapore is at a disadvantage. Why would you say that? Singapore's corporate tax is a flat 17%. In Hong Kong, corporate tax is at 17.5% for accessible profits for corporations and 16% for unincorporated businesses. This makes investors turn to Hong Kong instead. Wow! After so much dis discussion on economic impacts of globalization on Singapore, do you think that Singapore generally benefits or loses out? Well, I feel that globalization allows Singapore to benefit overall. She can access to many avenues for economic growth such as obtaining raw materials and more sources of imports worldwide. But won't this positive benefits be offset by the negative ones? Don't worry. The Singapore government has come up with appropriate policies to make the negative impact minimal by identifying the root causes of the economic problems. For instance, to train the unemployed and increase fiscal spending in times of recessions. I get it. I've learned a lot today. Same here. Let's go to Starbucks to get a cup of coffee. Sure.